Venice is an absolute jewel, one of a kind. The city is centered on the shallow Venetian lagoon and it's made of 118 small islands connected by over 400 bridges. The canals are really mind-blowing. In other towns you have a pavement or sidewalk and then the asphalt and cars. In Venice you still have the pavement but instead of the road you have water and boats instead of cars. No cars are permitted to enter Venice, exception being Piazzale Roma, Roma Square. This means that in Venice you have boat buses, water taxis, boat police and firefighters. My gosh, it's insane, I love it. Venice has been known by many names, the water city, the floating city, la dominante, la serenissima, but the one name we're going to focus on today is the mysterious name, the masked city. Historically, Venice was the capital of the Republic of Venice. It was a major financial and maritime power during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Venice was an important centre of commerce, especially silk, grain and spice, and of art from the 13th century to the end of the 17th. The city-state of Venice is considered to have been the first real international financial centre emerging in the 9th century and reaching its greatest prominence in the 14th century. Venice has been wealthy throughout most of its history and this extreme wealth paved the way for the birth of a very extravagant and peculiar culture, the culture of masks. Well, one of the reasons why masks are so popular in Venice is the Venetian Carnival, which is world-renowned, an absolutely spectacular tradition that has its roots into the medieval period. Once a year, Venetians dress up in their traditional clothing and wear their masks for this incredible event. But there is more to Venetian masks than just the carnival. Venetian masks can be divided in two categories, carnival masks and theatrical masks. When we say theatre, we actually mean la commedia dell'arte, in English, the comedy of art, which was a sort of improvisational theatre that was very popular from the 16th to the 18th century. Venetian masks are very interesting because even though now they are mostly just used for carnival, their initial usage, their basic function in the medieval period was actually that of disguise. Venetian citizens would wear them on a daily basis throughout the year. Because of the fact that each citizen in Venice enjoyed a high standard of living, everyone was part of a great economic machine that was the Republic. And in a society with such a level of unequaled wealth, concealing your identity in daily life became paramount. And much of that secrecy was actually pragmatic. Perhaps you might not want others to know what deals you were cutting or you wanted to indulge yourselves in many of the so-called prohibited pleasures that the city was offering and that you could afford. Gambling, for example, which went on day and night in the streets, visiting sex workers, but also being more quote-unquote open as far as your homosexuality or just wearing more revealing clothing for women, all of this could be done and could be achieved because you were maintaining anonymity. It is also believed that even nuns and monks would use these sort of disguises to join in to the gambling and sexual life that the city was offering. And of course, state inquisitors and spies could easily question citizens as they were maintaining their true identity in a more effective way as the citizens could just speak out without the fear of retribution. In Venice, in the medieval period, everyone had a voice. Rome, the Vatican and the Pope turned a blind eye. Everyone knew what was going on in Venice, but as long as the Republic continued to make generous donations to Rome and the Church, everything was accepted. One of the most traditional and characteristic masks of the Venetian Carnival is this mask, which is called the Bauta. Now, this is very interesting because it's one of those masks that actually begins with a real social function rather than just being a carnival mask. Initially, it was the mask, or well, one of those masks worn by both men and women who just wanted to uh, sort of maintain their anonymity as they were going on with their daily businesses. The mask is really practical. You can see that it has a little bit of an elongated both nose and chin. The reason for this is so that while I would be wearing this mask, I could eat and drink, because I've got space here, without revealing my identity. Very ingenious. 
So the bauta was used in many occasions as a device for hiding the wearer's identity and social status. It would permit the wearer to act more freely in cases where he or she wanted to interact with other members of the society outside the bounds of identity and everyday convention. It was used for a variety of purposes, some of them illicit or criminal, other just personal such as romantic encounters. As far as the name Bauta is concerned, there are two possible origins. One is that it comes from this German word that I cannot pronounce to save my life, which is supposed to mean to protect. But another possible origin is the word Bau from Babau, which is a traditional Italian representation of the monster or bad beast used by adults to scare children. This mask was allegedly considered an ideal disguise also for kings and royalty who could move freely into the city without being recognized. It is traditionally worn with the black tricorno, the three-pointed typical Venetian hat. Here is another very popular Venetian carnival mask, the Plague Doctor, il Dottore della Peste, il Medico della Peste. Now again, this mask doesn't originate as a Venetian mask uh, for carnival. It was actually used by doctors during the Black Plague, which was a bubonic plague pandemic which occurred in Afro-Eurasia from 1346 to 1353, caused by the Cocobacillus Yersinia pestis bacterium. Plague doctors actually wore these masks at the time because they believed that it would help them be protected from the spread of the disease. They didn't understand exactly the medical science behind the disease and they thought that by wearing the mask and stuffing the nose with lots of different kinds of flowers that that would work as a sort of respirator because they believed that the disease would spread through inhaling. Also the mask had crystal to protect the eyes, they would wear the hat to let people know that they were actual doctors and that they would carry leather gloves to minimize contact with their patients and a stick that they would use to move the patients away if they were getting too close to them. But there were also other masks. The volto is a very interesting one and usually I see it translated as face in Italian, I'd like to underline as an Italian that there are two ways to say face in Italian, faccia, which is usually more commonly used, and volto. Now volto has more of a beautiful sound to it. So uh, in everyday usage, usually we Italians use faccia, but then if you're writing for something a bit more poetic or if you're describing something in a bit more of a professional way and you want to use a word that sounds better, you usually use volto. And that's the little nuance that I can give you, extra nuance that I can give you on the word used. And the reason why it's called volto is because it covers the entirety of the face. Now, with this kind of mask, you wouldn't be able to eat, uh, so you have to consider it's probably a less convenient mask than the bauta that we have already experienced, but it's still a very traditional mask. And allegedly, it was used by the common people during holidays since medieval period. And it's particularly on the days dedicated to the saints, such as uh, Saint Mark, San Marco, San Vito, Santo Stefano, etc. and all the different festivities connected. The Moretta is another one that is really, really common. Usually the traditional one would just be black. But of course now in Venice you find them with all sorts of decoration. The Moretta is again an oval mask, usually made of black velvet, and it was worn primarily by women. Apparently this one was invented in France, but it became very popular uh, in Venice and was also used by women who were visiting convents. And one of the reasons why it was popular with women is because of the fact that it was covering less, so it was still preserving your identity, but you could still see some of the beautiful features of the face. Sometimes it would be finished off with a veil. The Jester is also one of my favorite, and the Jolly would be the female variant. It's a specific type of clown, and it's usually associated with the Middle Ages. Starting in Italy, the Jester moved all over Europe, and it actually influenced Spanish theater, uh, but also Holland, Germany, Austria, England, and especially France. And it's one of the, again, of the most popular masks and most common masks that you see here in Venice and that you can buy at traditional Venetian mask stores. Usually the hats were uh, very distinctive, made of cloth, with jingle bells attached at the end. Usually the jester mask would be accompanied with a mock scepter. Il gatto which means cat in Italian, is another one of the very popular Venetian carnival masks that you see even to this day, and it's sold all over the place in Venice. And the last but not least, we've got the Dama. And Dama is a very old-sounding, very beautiful word, which means lady. Uh, we could say it's the Italian way to say lady, really. 
we have lots of different elegant variations. But generally speaking, they all represent very, very wealthy Venetian women of the 16th century. This is one of the reasons why usually these masks are covered in jewels and even expensive clothing and elaborate coifs. In our day and age, this is probably the most popular, most beautiful mask type used during the Venetian carnival. Okay, so our journey through the fascinating masked city has finally come to an end. This is the story of the Venetian masks, which I find extremely, extremely interesting. And here I am in Venice right now. And if you haven't seen Venice, you should totally come here. It is a majestic city full of history and so many interesting and unique things. You should totally come. And thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron spread his wings. Goodbye.